this is Professor Villier from Worcester Polytechnic Institute and occasions for four point bending flexure uh, to calculate um, what the parameters of a material are from measured deflections and forces from a three point bending test. So just taking from the back of any stress analysis book and here I've cut and paste the uh, equations from Timoshenko. We have uh, called four-point bending because we have two forces, P, uh, here twice. So the force measured is equal to 2P, or P equals F over 2 here. Um, we have them loaded symmetrically at uh, a distance A from each end. So what's going to be, uh, what we would first calculate is what is the central deflection, not what's measured from the instron or whatever testing machine, but the central deflection is equal to V at the center. And for that, we'll use this equation because it's valid in the center area between A uh, and L minus A. And that's going to be equal to just rewriting that equation. Substituting L over 2 for X. So now in simplify, we've got 3L squared over 2, and we have minus 3L squared over 4, and that's going to be equal to 3 fourths. And you'll see that's the same as we get for del C. Generally, it's going to be given, but if your textbook only gives the equation of deflection for the four-point bending, uh, you can calculate uh, the center deflection. Okay, so what is the stiffness? We can calculate the modulus of the material just by rearranging this. Again, uh, noting that P equals F over 2. So we can put f over 2 numerator. Uh, we're putting the e to the left side of the equation and pulling del c, the deflection, to the bottom. We have 24i on the bottom. And then we have our 3l squared minus and that's your modulus of the material. So given um, your equation or, or your data coming out of the machine, it looks something like this. There's your stiffness. There's your bending stiffness, and that's going to be equal to that. And you can get those, you can pull those and use them in the equation here. We can also calculate the strain, and that would be the max strain at the top or bottom surface in the center, and that's going to be related to the max stress over E just by a for a linear elastic material. And if we Use the equation for moment. Again, moment is equal to um, m c over i. Now we need to know what m is, and we need to know what e is. E is just given um, in the equation above, and m from a force balance for three point uh, four point bending. Then we have reaction forces f over two, and we have our loading. Two and the distance a, distance a. So we do a free body diagram through a method of sections. Sorry. 
So our moment is going to be f x over 2. The maximum moment is going to be at point A, so it's f A over 2. So we can put f A over 2 instead of the mo maximum moment distance, the E in there, and again, E is given above, f over 2 A on the top, 3 L squared minus 4 A squared. Del C twenty four. Well, you can notice the F over twos cancel, the A's cancel, the I's cancel, and we are left with C, and then the the C again is the half thickness of the sample. So let's draw that here. This is the thickness of the sample. There's your neutral axis. C is the maximum distance because the maximum strain and stress are going to occur at the surface. So we have del C 24 over 3 L squared minus 4 A squared. So that's a strain that is valid at the surface in the center. Now the next thing we want to calculate is for the special case of L over 4. So um, in the case where the span S between the two loading points when S equals 2A for example, in a lab we did, the total length L between the, the that's the span, that is support span, that is uh, was 60 millimeters and this distance between loading points was the load span. Um, then we have a ratio of 2 of load of span support span over load span. So, so it's a common uh, special case for this. So in that case, in the equations, we get just plugging in the to equal so instead of A I'll put that L over 4 here that's going to equal PL over 96 PI and instead of 3 I'll put 12 fourths so we can get only the same denominator Four out, and we end up with eleven three eighty fourths. So this is not measured by the machine. center. This 
special case, the strain at the surface is equal to the same equation on the last slide. And now we plug in that A is L over 4, and we get only valid if you know what DC is, which is only del C is what's measured by a deflectometer. Because this is all in terms of del C, not the measured displacement out of the machine. In the next video, I'll do the case for anvil displacement from the Instron or whatever machine you're using.